Hi, Martin here. Today I want to talk to you about a new grease gun I got. This is the Lock and Lube LNL 151. Got this from Amazon. Uh, I'll provide a link in the description below where you can get the exact same one that I ordered here. Uh, by the way, I paid full price for this. I am not being sponsored by Lock and Lube, even though that would be really cool if I was. But anyway, now one of the reasons I got this is I got my old standby that I've had for 20 plus years, this uh, pistol grip one. Now, with the fact that I'm getting more uh, polyurethane bushings in my, I got an 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and I put more polyurethane bushings in it, and you should not use a typical grease like I got in that grease gun right there. This one here with a 3% molly because it ends up softening the polyurethane and kind of destroys it. So instead of changing out, you know, the grease in the grease gun, which is a messy job, just get another grease gun. That way I got the two grease guns for dual purpose. One for the polyurethane bushing, one for like ball joints and tie rods and stuff like that. Besides, I've got five tubes of this stuff that I literally found on the road. Obviously a service truck made a corner, bo uh, the box of the grease fell off. I found it after one tube did get run over, but I basically got uh, quite a few years worth of grease right here and I'm not throwing that out. So I got myself a the Super Lube grease right here. Uh, this is intended for you know, polyurethane type bushings. You know, it won't degrade them or anything like that. So. That's what we're going to be using this for right there. All right, uh, this I'll show you what you get in the box here. You get the grease gun. This is a lever grip type grease gun. You get the 20 inch flex hose with the swivel attachment on it, which is very nice. And then you get the patented lock and lube connector right here with a rebuilt kit that comes with it as well. Uh, just in case the seals or whatever go bad sometime down the road. That's real cool. All right, let's get this thing assembled. Oh, by the way, on this lock and lube uh, grease gun, it's got a couple features that are really nice. For one, it's got the air bleed on it right here. That makes the, getting this thing primed really nice. And it also has a bulk fill port on it. Personally, this is one that um, I, I wouldn't use. I mean, I don't have a five gallon bucket of grease sitting around where you can go up to, stab it on there and fill the grease gun back on. Uh, but that's real cool. And then it also has this uh, patented Zerk on here, which I'm gonna show you in a second after we get this hose attached and what it's great for. Now you can use the plumber's tape if you want on the threads. Personally, I'm not gonna do that. All right, screw the hose in there. Looks like a 13 mil wrench for that. All right, got that in there real good and tight. Now we'll get out the lock and lube coupler here. Attach that. All right, with a couple 9 16 inch wrenches, we can tighten the uh, coupler on here. There we go. All right, now to fill this, you're gonna pull back this T-pull right here. And then there's a slot, once you get it out far enough, that you take the handle and pull it off to one side. And it'll stay out there just like that. Now we can go ahead, take off the uh, tube. Get this right grease right here. Take this cap off. Slide the tube down in there. Now at this point, you can pull the uh, tab off of here. Where do you think you're going? Oh yeah, look at that. That looks like a silicone-based type grease right there. Check it 
you got that grease right there. Screw that on there. All right. Now you can release the T pull. Let's give it a few pumps and see what happens. Now, I've noticed I'm not getting anywhere with this. What you want to do is unscrew this about half a turn. And that's going to release some air as well. Let me give it a little bit more. I'm going to hold the, the air release down while pumping. All right, if that. None of that works by either holding this down or unscrewing this. Pull the T-handle. Now once you pull the T-handle back, turn the handle one quarter of a turn and now you're able to push the air out because it's locking it to the plate. Begin pumping and right away I can already tell right there I'm feeling some resistance and it should be working. All right, now I'm here. I'm feeling some resistance now. There it is. Grease is coming out. Turn that back in. I'm going to return this rod. There we go. All right, I can see here the uh, you may want to re snug this up here from the factory where the hose comes to the swivel. I said, yeah, that definitely needs to be tightened up some more. Some grease was leaking past that. There we go. All right. Well, I'm going to go try this thing out. Always wipe off your grease zerks that way you don't get no contamination inside the zerk there. Now to get this lock and loop coupler on there, pull this lever here, push it down, place that on there and just release. Now it's on there. All right, let's start pumping the grease into it. See what happens here. Oh yeah, you can see it coming out right there. That's got some of that old molly in there. I'm going to keep going because I want to force some of that out of there. Yeah, you can really see it over here on this side. All right, I'm going to call that good. But as you can see, none of the grease came out around this here. And it stayed on very securely. I like that. Now I've got a ballistic fabrication uh, joint down in here. It's got the polyurethane bushing in it. And there's a grease circle over here on the other side of it. I'll get that hooked up and get that one uh, greased up. Now right now, it's been squeaking really bad when I drive. Um, and it's on this side, I know that. So it's either this bushing here, this one here, and I also got a polyurethane in the upper control arm. Hey, I can't believe how easy it is to pump grease with this thing. With that, uh, my old pistol grip there, I had a heck of a time get pumping grease into these particular bushings right here. This is going smooth. Oh yeah. I didn't even see that coming out there on the other side. Well, just wasted a bunch of grease. All right, that one is definitely good. Get this bushing here on the other side. Oh yeah, right away it's pushing the grease out right there. Yeah, 
look all that good. So, oh yeah, right here. I can see it on the other side coming out. There we go. We're good. All right. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, that uh, grease cirque right here on the very top, that makes a great place to hook that right on there. And now you got a carrying handle or a way to hang it on your your pegboard wall or whatever, right? So uh, keeps it from uh, getting all messed up. All right. Um, other than me having a little problem getting it primed, and by the way, there are good tips in the instructions uh, on how to get it primed. There's some good tips in here, and most of it was to do with this T-pull, uh, playing with that, and uh, then it took right off after that. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, finally got uh, some actual silicone type grease into those polyurethane bushings. It worked all out. All right, and if you enjoyed this video, I sure appreciate the thumbs up. If you never subscribed to me before, hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell symbol right next to it. That way you're notified the next time I upload a video. And also, I'm Amazon Affiliate. Please check out the links in the description down below where you'll find products and tools that we used in this video. And you can do... That wasn't supposed to happen. All your Amazon shopping through one of those links and I earn a small commission that way. Thanks again for watching and we will see you on the next one.